And that particular find was on camera too. Now, to recap, treasure hunting for coins and relics. One, research the history. Two, try to use a discriminator function to isolate coins only. Three, carefully check your found item before you throw it away. With most metal detectors, a coin can clearly stand out from otherwise trashy areas. This is because they are mostly made from highly conductive materials like copper, silver and aluminium and have a large surface area which corrodes over time, causing a sort of halo effect which appears to the detector as a much larger item. Therefore, you can detect coins much deeper than other similar size items and even pick them out from areas loaded with trash. This next section is all about choosing a good metal detector. The first thing you should consider is how much time and money you are prepared to spend. The second is to take time to experiment and understand your detector. The third important point is be patient. Don't expect to find something valuable right away. In fact, most older VLF metal detectors tend to respond much stronger to high concentrations of ground minerals than pieces of gold, commonly referred to as hot spots or brown noises. Even a salty environment can push detectors electronics to a degree where the sensitivity must be turned down in order for them to work in these types of environments. But at least there ain't any wild fluctuations in the ground which has to be interpreted by the humble ear slash brain. But luckily it is possible because it appears that the Earth's entire non-magnetic structure has been constructed to allow this type of energy or magnetic fields to pass straight through air and non-metallic matter largely unaffected. In fact, magnetic fields at least responsible for keeping our atmosphere in place here on the surface of the planet. But here there is a paradox as well. Yes, there are times when being in the right area and having a powerful detector with a large search coil will find that deep item which is out of reach with most other detectors. But so are those deep pull tabs that are closed loop sound just like a gold ring. You can spend a lot of time digging only to finish up with just another pull tab or possibly a bottle top. Nothing. Not even if I get really close. Kind of in there. But I'm going to just change something and show you an anomaly I've found. Right, watch what happens. Same ring. Why is it picking it up now? Good depth too. Right. The difference is, see that little cut? When I squeeze it, it closes the loop and the detector picks it up. If I leave it as it is, it's not a closed loop. It won't pick the it up. Three important aspects of detecting ethics. One, don't go places where you're not allowed to be in. Two, fill in all holes after you are finished. Three, try to find the rifle owner of your valuable items that you have found. Of course, if the item has been lost for a long time, you may never be able to return it. And what a fantastic way to remember the day by keeping it in a collection or getting a monetary reward for those efforts can be a great motivation to continue treasure hunting. Further development led us to explore the possibility of using a modified design underwater and in doing so we discovered a wondrous underwater world of local reefs and sea life. 
While our experimenting underwater led to a detector which could be used underwater, there was two very expensive lessons learned about electronics and salt water. The first is that salt water destroys electronics to a degree where it cannot even be repaired. And the second is making a watertight container at depth is a lot harder than it looks. Oh no! <laughs> oh well, that's the end of that. We also learned that people lose a lot of jewellery in shallow water and they really appreciate it if you can find their lost treasured jewellery for them. The Great Barrier Reef was so full of wonder that we decided to rebuild a boat and trailer and set up a simple but effective live stream into the boat from the bottom of the sea. No, you can't transmit video through water. It is technically impossible, but there is an even better and easier way. You can use a high quality waterproof GoPro camera with a waterproof LED light, then connect it to a battery operated TV through the HDMI cable. That way you get unbeatable high definition video in real time and without having to get wet just throw the setup in the water and watch the action from inside the boat or on land. Moves out. Uh, we're recording. You gonna try to pull it up? Yeah. We'll see what he does. Yeah, we'll see what he does. Is he detected anything yet? No, it's still there. Alright, I'm gonna start calling up hard. Oh, don't break it. He's still in there, go. Hey, I think you got him. He's not moving, so... He's not trying to get out? No. You got him. Oh, you don't want a crab! It appears that the favourite food for these crabs is mullet roe. Hey, you think we're eating one too, isn't it? Come around. Well, I'm just going to show it on camera. Now make sure it's a uh, boy one first. Uh, I have to have a look at the underneath. I, I don't really want to stick my hand in there. I've already been stuck by one of these before. I'll bring it in the boat so you don't drop it over. Yeah. Oh, I'll just look at the underneath. Ah, oh, look, you can eat him too. We'll just check his size, but he doesn't look too bad. Hello. I'm not that angry. Well, that was pretty cool. Uh, just put my... Hey, my first crab. With your invention. Cool, yeah. it's good because I'm not getting any fish here. It's good to run in the new motor too. Yeah. Well, shall we let this poor little wider go? You'll... Well, we've got to measure him up if you want to keep him, I don't care. No, we'll let him go because we only got one. We want more than one. We'll let him out there and breed. <laughs> All right, buddy. See you later. All right, here we go. Oh, 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 he's sensing the water. Go, go. Here we go. He was quick down there. There's no need to spend a small fortune on a camera setup. However, there are problems here, and the main ones are securing the connections 100% and completely eliminating any salt water ingress. We also discovered that it'd be quite useful for catching crabs, as we have learned that despite the popular belief that you can catch many crabs in one pot, the fact is, at least for these crabs, they don't like sharing the same dinner table. And there are lots of other unexpected visitors that are very interesting to watch while you're out fishing. Predatory eels like dark places and this one tipped the whole setup upside down. But watch how it attacks its meal.
People often associate gold with glitter, paradise, wealth. But in reality, gold is often found in dirty and seemingly uninteresting environments. Finding precious items in a beautiful sunny environment is many people's idealistic dream as we too tend to believe in what we want to believe in. But on the other hand, it is also sometimes very true. A paradox is defined as something that seems to be one thing, but is in fact often quite the opposite. I say that because it appears that the better the detector you are using is, the better your chances of finding valuable objects. But in fact, the area that you are detecting often has a much greater influence on your possible finds. Sometimes you can find some beautiful pieces of hand-constructed gold items in paradise or sunny areas on the beach. I have had many hobbies and interests in my life and I can tell you that treasure hunting is by far the most fascinating and potentially rewarding pastime there is.